had one stop and that was cross country and it was rider error and I was out of the ribbons twice and this is in the northwest so I was competing against Seattle and Portland and people like uh, and, and people from you know fancy barns and we didn't have a trainer here then so I had to travel to get my event training and I was just so addicted to horses that but Billy taught me a lot and he was the one that had me wanting to get more knowledge about things that weren't uh, drugs to help him perform and muscle up and get a beautiful and he was a very very beautiful horse when we got everything straightened out so he led me to start taking taking classes there were no massage therapy classes um, there 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 just wasn't much available so I started taking classes for people and adapting it and playing around with Billy to see if they helped and then after I wrote basic equine energy balancing and started going to market to market it and the read, a, read along coloring books which you can see that are for kids that I write and and that are sold nationally um, I met a lot of people and someone said to me one of the gals who I I uh, met at market said you need to try this laser it's a respond laser and she gave me the laser during the the time I used it on myself and I thought boy I could add this to my work so I bought a respond laser it is a pulsing laser this is the fast head on it so you don't it doesn't take me very much time it's just a couple beeps every place but it works on the cellular level and I've uh, told you about the lasers in the hand uh, in the handouts and how they work um, now they've been around for a long time and there are no side effects. You never look into a laser or never shoot a laser into a horse's eye. But we have had no side effects from the laser work. It's a cold light laser. Um, people don't feel it. Horses do. It usually feels really good. It releases um, deep muscle spasms clear underneath. Um, the, the horses have layers of muscles. It is a, a tremendous tool. Um, you don't need to know how to use this. It beeps. You don't need to know what frequencies, but you need to know where to use it. And, and that's what I know how to do and can teach. Um, the other laser that I don't use but I rent out is a Vetro laser. And it's a really great laser. Um, it's got three little lights. You just turn it on like a flashlight and put it on the horse in different areas. I rent it to people because sometimes they're trying to heal up a horse and they can't afford these, these bigger lasers. And um, this laser, um, if you call the number, uh, the guy that invented it, who's a veterinarian, answers the phone and he helps you out. And so I probably sold 10 or 15 lasers for him. It's nothing that I get money for, but this is the one I... It takes me too long to use this laser. It's slow. You need to put it in the position longer than I have to, to be able to treat horses. This is the, the pulsar laser that I use. And it's a very sophisticated... It looks like a toy. It's a very sophisticated machine. I can treat the horse from a few feet off if I need to, so if there's a horse that's misbehaving, um, and believe me, I have some horses that aren't really easy to teach. They're, um, they're great horses, but they're, they're hot, and their manners aren't very good, and there's some times that I need to laser them from a little farther off than being right next to them. But this, is, this laser has 200 settings. <coughs> And I know how to use those settings. I only use about 10 of them when I treat a horse usually. But um, it, it is a, a, a really sophisticated piece of equipment that has done absolutely amazing things. I've even been amazed at it. Um, it accelerates uh, healing time, all the lasers do. Um, they relieve pain. They get the circulation going. They get swelling down. Um, they energize the nervous system. They are incredible pieces of equipment. 
this is an activator and when I come um, to the horses I will activate which it, it puts out I have always have it on the lowest lowest so I'm not manipulating a spine or any of the vertebrae and I'll pass this around you can put it on your leg it, you can hardly feel the click on it um, but it activates the nerves the nerve pathways in the vertebrae um, I took uh, training from Dr. Inman in Washington State. He teaches the activator and he teaches about lasers. And he, he believes, he's done a lot of study on the activator. He was a small animal vet and he believes that activating the spine and activating those pathways, that the pathways are the first thing that go and diminish in their effectiveness when you're injured, a person, a dog, or a horse. And so by stimulating the nervous system in that pathway, you help the healing time of a horse. You can't hurt a horse when you use it on that light tap. It's just hardly anything, but it does wonders. and. Um, I just treat the whole horse with it. I can't hurt hurt it if the pathway is already going. It's already going. So, but if it's not, and um, uh, this this is a very good uh, little machine, and um, I also use it on muscles. Um, if you know where the trigger points are in the muscles, I don't have to manipulate or massage the muscles. I go right to the trigger point, and the muscle releases. So it's a fast therapy for me. The other therapies I talk about here, I've already shown you here. I have so much equipment, it's, it's kind of amazing. I, I have almost something for everything. A lot of the uh, therapies and the modalities, um, I've gotten the question, well, they all seem to improve circulation. They all seem to um, do the same thing. I believe that every horse and every human is so unique that my job is to find out what works best for the horse that I'm treating. Um, I know that you folks have had, probably had body work and some of you probably know that some body work doesn't feel too good or it's not for you or you prefer one over the other that it just is better for you. I was in a car accident about 10 years ago and the only thing that got rid of my headaches was uh, a really good massage therapist. Um, it was the only, only thing that got, got me through. And then of course after nine months I was good. But nothing else helped and I didn't want to take painkillers. So all of you know that we're so unique. We don't all take the same type of aspirin for pain relief. Maybe some of you don't take any, <laughs> but, but we find our way, it's because our bodies are so unique, and horses are so unique, and dogs are so unique, and all animals is, are, are. So when I, when I treat a horse, I try to find exactly what's going to work best for them. And I can do these methods in different ways. If I can't use the activator, I have another little thing I tap manually. Um, so that, because some horses don't like the click. I also have an electric um, activator because when I get really, really busy around competitions, I get my hands get tired. So um, it, it looks like a drill and it clicks. And the, the horses, when I go to barns and treat four or five horses, I use that. If I have the opportunity to treat them when they're young, they get used to the sound and, and they're just fine with it. And after they've had it done, horses even more so than people just relax and they know the second treatment, it's just a breeze, usually. <laughs> there are some exceptions. <laughs> um, what I want to talk to you, that's kind of what I do, and I've just uh, told you in the handout kind of uh, what I do during a treatment. Trail horses are probably some of the soundest horses I treat. 
they're probably some of the horses, if they're taken care of, that live the longest. I think that they stay sound if, they're, if they have owners that shoe them properly, float their <coughs> teeth, um, don't let them get too fat, all of those things. The, the rough ground and the ups and downs really get the joints moving. And most trail riders do not have their horse in a frame. A jumper, a dressage horse is in a frame, which is a lot more wear and tear on a horse. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's a lot more wear and tear. And so I, boy, I've seen, I've seen trail horses that were, you know, well into their <clears throat> later 20s that are still going down the trail. And I think trail riding is fabulous, and I do a lot of it now on my own. It's it's. It's one of my favorite things to do. I have some things for trail riders that I'm sure a lot of you already know, but I am going to go through them uh, because I think they're really important. The first thing is pick the horse that's right for you. Um, temperament, you know, is so important. Confirmation is really important. For instance, in a trail horse, if you don't have a horse with a good wither, you're going to fight with that saddle its whole life. There's some things that can be done about that, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about saddle pads, but you're going to fight it. Uh, you can put a crouper on, all of that, but it's going to be a challenge as long as you're on the trail. And if you're picking a new horse, I'd pick one with a good wither. Pick the right age for yourself. Um, that's a lesson I've had to learn. Um, this sounds a little preachy, but I don't ride two years, two year old or three year olds anymore. I don't care if they have the best temperament in the world because they don't have experience. And I just can't afford to get hurt. And so that's my opinion. I would go and get a little older horse. I'd get a horse my age that was already going down the, down the trail, had some really good experiences in the backcountry. Um, then I wouldn't have to worry about it. If I love to train horses, it might be something different. Some people really, they've done it all their lives, they know what they're doing, they, they really like that process. And so that's wonderful if you want to get a younger horse, but you also know that certain things are going to happen. And training of the horse. Um, in my later years of eventing, uh, I evented for 30 years. And uh, finally, my friends did an intervention on me when I was 60 and said, you can't do this anymore. And um, so I, um, I gave up eventing and started uh, working cows. And I have a Rocky Mountain horse that I love to trail ride. But I always, in my later years, had horses that were relatively trained. They had already gone novice or training. Most of them had gone prelim and I was taking them training or novice. I didn't really want to have the training process when I was 50 riding an event horse. So that's what I looked for. So uh, when you look for a horse, you also want to look for a horse that has really good feet. Um, you Hard feet are good. I always shoe my horses because I don't want to worry about being on rocks or being this what here. We don't have sandy country. Yes, we do in Eureka, but uh, when you want to wake up in the morning and go anywhere, um, and I do, and my horse has really good feet, but he gets shod. And Billy Shakespeare, by the way, had shoes all his life on his front feet. When you would take them off, even in the winter, he would abscess. He was that sensitive. I mean, I could go into everything with that horse. But he, um, he lived until he was 24, and his feet were always fine, even though they, they, weren't, they were small. And so horses are different. And I think that horses have a scale from 0 to 10. If he has a 10 temperament, he's perfect. If he has a two temperament, and in the Rocky Mountain world, they rate them, you know, you might want to take a pass. They may know what they're talking about. So same way with their health. Some horses get ulcers. They're just prone to it. 
even if they're going down the trail. And others, you know, you could probably feed them anything and they'd be just fine. Um, the biggest thing, again, I'll underline that we worry about is founder. And it's founder time right now, folks. That grass is coming up. And, um, you know, they can, I, ha I have a horse that I can't let out in the grass. He gets crusty right away. I'm not going to give him a chance to founder. So, obviously, we know that horses need good feed and water and not to overfeed. You need to float their teeth, uh, deworm them, and decide on vaccines. Vaccines are a choice. And it depends on where you're going to be and where your uh, where your what, what your horses are exposed to, and um, so you can make it a choice. Shoeing, I think, is tremendously important. Having said that, I have to tell you a quick little story. Okay, I have to tell you a quick little story. I rode with a, an 84-year-old man. He's quit riding now, and he'd been an endurance rider, and his horse was 22 years.